Concerning the arterial blood supply of the thyroid gland, it's the thyroid gland is an endocrine gland and it has a profuse blood supply. The arterial supply is provided by two pairs of arteries, the superior thyroid artery and the inferior thyroid artery. The superior thyroid artery is a branch of the uh, external carotid artery, just distal to its bifurcation. So this is the superior thyroid artery, it reaches the upper pole of the thyroid gland and divides into anterior and posterior branches. The inferior thyroid artery is a branch of the subclavian uh, uh, artery. It's through the, so actually, it's a branch of the thyrocervical trunk from the subclavian uh, artery. Um, because of the high vascularity of the thyroid gland, then in thyrotoxicosis, owing to its high vascularity, the blood flow can be heard with a stethoscope uh, as a brewery. And for the same reason, for the high vascularity of the gland, hemostasis is a major problem in thyroid surgery. There is also another inconstant branch that might be present in about 10% of the cases. This is called the thyroid emma artery. And this is only present in about 10% of individuals. It may arise from the arch of the aorta, from the brachiocephalic trunk, or from the left common carotid, and passes in front of the trachea to reach the gland from below, close to the isthmus of the gland. The importance of this uh, artery is that apart from it provides an alternative blood to the th supply to the thyroid gland, uh, its presence in front of the, the trachea should be kept in mind because it might be a source of an arterial bleeding that is maybe difficult to control uh, during tracheostomy. The venous drainage is provided by three sets of veins. Uh, the superior thyroid vein, the middle thyroid vein, and the inferior thyroid vein. The superior thyroid vein drains from the upper pole of the gland and is, is uh, close in its course to the superior thyroid artery. It drains into the internal jugular vein. The middle thyroid vein uh, it uh, has no uh, artery carrying the same name and is, is not accompanied by an artery and it drains into the internal jugular vein. The inferior thyroid vein or veins, they form a plexus of veins, drain the inferior aspect of the gland, pass in front of the trachea and usually they drain into the left brachiocephalic vein because the left brachiocephalic vein crosses the midline from left to right to join the right brachiocephalic in order to form the superior vena cava on the right side of the body. The inferior thyroid, although we have an inferior thyroid artery, but the artery does not accompany the vein. The artery uh, is uh, located more laterally and the inferior thyroid vein or veins are not accompanied by the inferior thyroid artery. The superior thyroid artery, as you can see it in this view from behind, this is the superior thyroid artery. This is a view from behind. Uh, at its beginning, it supplies a small branch that passes through the thyrohyoid membrane, which extends between the thy thyroid cartilage and the hyoid bone. This branch is called the superior laryngeal artery, and it is uh, accompanied by a nerve that is sensory to the larynx. At the upper part of the larynx, above the vocal folds, this is called the, the internal laryngeal nerve internal laryngeal uh, nerve accompanies the superior laryngeal artery. Here you can see in this coronal section that the superior thyroid artery is approaching the superior pole of the thyroid gland where it divides into anterior and posterior branches supplying these surfaces of the gland and it is closely related to the external laryngeal nerve. This is the external laryngeal nerve here, this diagram, and you can see it here, the yellow structure in this diagram as well, and both here are entrapped by the sternothyroid muscle. This is again to show you that the superior thyroid artery uh, divides into its two branches after it pierces the pretracheal fascia, in other words, it divides very close to the upper pole of the thyroid 
gland. The inferior thyroid artery is a branch of the thyroid cervical trunk. This is a view from behind, posterior view, the, showing the um, uh, subclavian artery, some of its branches. This one is the vertebral artery, this is the internal thoracic artery, and this is the thyroid cervical trunk. The thyroid cervical trunk uh, gives uh, uh, rise to other branches like the uh, suprascapular and transverse cervical as well as the inferior thyroid and ascending cervical arteries that's why it's called the thyro cervical the inferior thyroid artery makes a bend and actually it is long and tortuous as you can see it here in this diagram the tortuous course of the inferior thyroid artery is due to the fact that in every swallow, the thyroid gland ascends a few centimeters and must naturally drag its blood supply with it. If this artery has no capability to elongate the inferior thyroid artery, it would, it would be traumatized. So the inferior thyroid artery, uh, it bends or above the lower pole of the thyroid gland, does not enter at the lower pole of the thyroid uh, gland and it divides before entering the gland it divides into multiple branches before it uh, even passes into the pretracheal fascia it divides into multiple branches uh, and these branches are related to the recurrent laryngeal nerve that is located in the groove between the trachea and esophagus usually the nerve passes deep to the vessels but sometimes the recurrent laryngeal nerve is superficial to the inferior thyroid uh, arteries and sometimes even so it uh, passes uh, between the arterial branches this is the again to show you the uh, bending of the inferior thyroid artery and its division into branches away from the thyroid gland the relation of the recurrent laryngeal nerve which is located in the groove between the trachea and esophagus you remember the section here it is located the recurrent laryngeal nerve in the groove between the trachea and the esophagus. So both thyroid arteries therefore are related to nerves. The superior thyroid artery, this one, is related to the external laryngeal nerve and the inferior thyroid artery is related to the recurrent laryngeal nerves. And these nerves might be injured during thyroidectomy because during thyroidectomy it is required that the vessels supplying the thyroid gland should be ligated and divided um, to avoid injury of the external uh, laryngeal nerve the superior thyroid artery is ligated and sectioned near uh, the uh, upper pole of the thyroid gland where it is not so closely related to the external laryngeal nerve. You can see here that the superior thyroid artery at its origin is closely related to the external laryngeal nerve while the nerve is away from the artery at the upper pole of the thyroid gland where the artery here should be ligated and cut. So you can see here that the, it is recommended that the superior thyroid artery should be uh, ligated and cut uh, very close to the upper pole of the thyroid uh, gland in order to avoid injury of the uh, external laryngeal nerve. The external laryngeal nerve in fact supplies an in one intrinsic muscle of the larynx and that is the cricothyroid muscle. All the other intrinsic muscles of the larynx uh, are supplied by the recurrent laryngeal nerve except the cricothyroid muscle. The cricothyroid muscle as you see here in this diagram shows the function of the cricothyroid which will be lost in case of uh, injury of the external laryngeal nerve, the cricothyroid muscle pulls forwards on the cr uh, thyroid cartilage over the cricoid cartilage and this will tense the vocal uh, cord. So uh, sectioning of the external laryngeal nerve will produce weakness of the voice uh, because the vocal folds cannot be tensed. So there will be low pitched sound, weakness of the voice because the vocal folds cannot be tensed. The um, recurrent laryngeal nerve as has been mentioned has a variable relation to the 
inferior thyroid artery and because of its proximity to the inferior thyroid artery it may be injured while ligating this artery during thyroidectomy and it is advisable to ligate the inferior thyroid artery well away from the gland lateral to the gland uh, before it begins to uh, divide and this is to ensure that the recurrent laryngeal nerve is not injured uh, recurrent laryngeal nerve may be injured during operation the recurrent laryngeal nerve may be compressed because of the enlarged thyroid or because of a tumor not necessarily because of thyrotoxicosis or ED or uh, goiter but it may be uh, involved by compression uh, of a tumor that affects the thyroid gland and this will result in hoarseness of voice or stridor depending whether it is unilateral or uh, bilateral the recurrent laryngeal nerve supplies all the intrinsic muscles of the larynx except the cricothyroid muscle and it's advisable that a surgeon about to perform a thyroidectomy examines the vocal cords prior to operation so that if there is any problem post-operatively one knows at least the origin of the lesion this picture uh, shows the normal vocal cords here they can be adducted and abducted as you can see here in this diagram uh, so the normal vocal cords here in case of bilateral paralysis you the patient will be unable to adduct or to adduct neither abduction nor adduction of the vocal cords and the vocal cords will be just off the midline in a position which is called the cadaveric position and uh, so the what we call the opening between the vocal cords or the rima glottidis will be very narrow it, it cannot be closed during phonation so this will result in hoarseness like in whispering um, or uh, um, during respiration the vocal cords should be separated should be abducted from each other and this will uh, uh, in case of bilateral paralysis this will not take place so this will result in difficulty in breathing and a stridor during inspiration if it is unilateral paralysis uh, you can see here one of the vocal cords can be abducted but the other is kept in the cadaveric position and this will cause uh, hoarseness of voice stridor is more likely to uh, accompany bilateral paralysis of the vocal cords due to bilateral injury of the recurrent laryngeal nerve.